very warm welcome to yet another episode of the Scale Tail podcast. I hope you are able to find value on the topics that I discuss around customer success with my prestigious guest. I'm your host, Mosmi Ambasta. I'm the founder and CEO at Zapscale. And I'm so happy to be here with our third episode of Scale Tail podcast. Today, we have an exciting topic lined up that will surely spark your interest. Our topic for today is zero to hero, prioritizing customer success in the zero to one journey. And to talk about this, we have a special guest today, Jarvis Harris. Jarvis, am I pronouncing your name correct? You are pronouncing it correctly. You did it. Perfect. Awesome. Perfect. So Jarvis is the Chief Customer Officer at ScholarPath. ScholarPath is an education platform designed to help high school students pursue a future true to their talents and passions. From the year 2010 to current day, Jarvis has taken on roles in CS, from management consulting all the way up to Chief Customer Officer. Jarvis continues to do wonderful things personally and professionally as he currently works, mentors, ministers and consults while running his consulting company, the Jarvis Group, which focuses on customer success and digital transformation services. Welcome to Scale Tail Podcast, Jarvis. It's great to have you. How have you been? I've been well. I've been well. As you just said, I've been involved in a lot. It's busy times, but it's always great to be busy. So um, in seasons, I would say that. So it's been a busy time. Uh, a lot's happening. Uh, what we're going to talk about today is, is pivotal for so many emerging businesses and also mm -hmm. businesses that are just in a point of reset. I think, you know, the economy and so many shifts in the market, it's really important to be that zero to hero and understanding yes, how to really yes. build from ground level. So i um, excited to talk about that today, as well as, like I said, just a lot going on in the world of customer success yeah. and just in the world. It's summertime. Hey, you know, school's out, depends on where you are. So it's vacations, it's, swim, it's swimming, it's pools, all kinds of stuff. So <laughs> it's summertime. It's, you know, last time we had a chat, you were talking about that apart from, you know, all the many things you do, you also do a lot of consulting with a lot of early stage companies. And that is one of the reasons I thought, you know, when somebody works with multiple companies, there's a lot of insights that come through that experience, you know, of making mistakes and learning and correcting. What I want to understand is, you know, when early days, when a founder starts, you know, you are, you develop a product, you start mm -hmm. getting few customers. Of course, you are focused on sales and improving that process. And there are like 10,000 documentation around on how to go about it for very early stage customer success you sort of feel your way around and mm -hmm. you know end up making mistakes and learning from it but what I would really like to understand based on your experience of course what are the few things that you know a founder should prioritize because whatever information is out there about you know what to prioritize in CS those are all for very mature companies Right. But right. early stage, you have limited budget, limited resources and limited time. So what are the few things that you can prioritize at this stage and just focus on those to get your path correct? Yeah, absolutely. I think, you know, as you said, there are so many things out there for you to focus on. <clears throat> and, and there's a couple of things. So, you know, I'll kind of dive into maybe, you know, like, the, like you said, the top five things that would really be important. And I think as you first start, the first thing you want to do, the first, the very first, and I say first, is you want to make sure that you establish a charter for your customer success function. And what I mean by that is you want to make sure you have an actual charter of what you're going to do and how you're going to do it and what it means to the business. Why is this important? It's important because you need to figure out what does customer success mean in your specific market, in your product line, in your business. There is a textbook definition of customer success, but oftentimes based on if you're MRR, ARR, or if you have a highly technical product, mm -hmm. whatever that may be, you have to define what customer success means for your organization, for your company first. So you can start to evangelize and speak and bring life and light to the actual customer success organization from every department. But you first have to foundationally define what customer success is. So I think the first thing is having a charter and really defining customer success for your organization, not taking a book and saying, hey, this is what it is. You can take pieces from the book, but you need to be able to make it customized for your company. So that's the first thing, like I said, to so kind of, you know, starting the process, setting the vision, writing it out. 
And I think the next thing you want to do after that, you know, you want to drive into understanding what the I- ideal customer profile is. And, and, and mm. what I mean by that is, so one part of that is first having the mission, but the next thing is the ideal customer profile saying, okay, this is the ideal customer profile that we're selling to. So it's very important early on to establish an, a very close knit relationship with sales. So there's an interlock that needs to exist mm-hmm. between sales and CS at the very, very, very beginning. And the reason I say that is because you need to say, okay, well, sales, who are we selling to? And Mm -hmm. what are the challenges? What are the opportunities? Mm -hmm. What are those specific things that you're running into when we're talking to a customer, getting them to the point to sign? Why is that important? You've already defined what customer success is, Mm -hmm. but now you need to be able to understand what the customers bring into the table when they come in the door. So mm-hmm. are we looking at the fact that our customers are novice or our customers are educated buyers or our customers are coming in with specific challenges? Why is that important? Because you have to make sure your onboarding is solid. And the only way you ensure consistent, fast, robust onboarding processes is to ensure that you understand the ideal customer profile what we're selling, what are those challenges, and what the customers actually bring to the table. So let me stop right there because I said something <clears throat> that I feel like is important, is not what <clears throat> we think the issue is, it's mm-hmm. what sales hears the issue is. So understanding, hey, we built this product to do X, Y, Z. That's great. But we know X is the biggest thing. So they'll get to Y and Z, but we got to solve for X and we need to execute on X very, very efficiently and fast. So we need to make sure that we understand what sales is saying and hear that. So as a customer success organization, you know what to build your onboarding around to drive first value. Okay, so that's point two. And I'll stop. I think you had something. Yeah, yeah. let's let's out. unpack these because I know you have more points, but let's unpack the first two. So the first <clears> one <throat> is look at your product, understand how you are going to do your customer success and create your customer success charter, right? Yeah. What are you going to do when you go first day with the customer? What are you going to talk about? What is the journey you plan to take them through essentially? Wow, your customer success, if it is integration, will you talk about integration first? And what are the things you need to, is the, is my understanding correct, Jarvis? And if you can, you know, elaborate this a little bit with maybe an example, that would be great. Yeah, so your, your example was close. So I think part mm-hmm. of that is the first is, like you said, it's being able to d- decide that mission. So our, our, des- our desire for customer success for Jarvis Group is to ensure that we bring uh, customer insights, understanding, mm-hmm. and frameworks to a customer so they can have a repeatable process to drive value early, often, and consistently. So how do we do, so that, that's our mission. So Mm -hmm. we want to make sure that we build our repeatable process. We want to have frameworks. We want to be able to have consistent value. So that's the scale of what we're trying to do because Mm -hmm. our ultimate goal as a consulting team is to ensure that the customer understands what they're doing, have processes that they can map and have a way that they can do it consistently. So that's what we're trying to do. So that's kind of our charter to go in and build those relationships and build out mm-hmm. that framework and things. So for a software company, it might be our charter is to ensure that our customers understand the value proposition of our, mm-hmm. our product, to understand how to bring about data transformation and X and Y mm-hmm. and this last thing. So that's the overall charter to get that done and to engage executive sponsors and ensure that the entire business or 60% of the business is utilizing the product. That's our charter. So that's you know kind of that first step. And that charter really defines what we wanna do and the overall mission. It doesn't get into the granularity mm. of what you just talked about. Mm. That happens after you map after. out point two, that ideal customer ICP. profile. Yeah, once you figure out okay, this is our customer profile Mm -hmm. and this is what they look like. Then you go in and figure out day one, we want to come in and talk about this. We want to ensure that the customer has Mm an enablement plan. We Mm -hmm. want to make sure that we have first value in 45 days. Mm -hmm. And that comes from that ideal customer profile that we've extrapolated from sales Mm -hmm. 
mm -hmm. uh, based on what they're seeing and what we're selling, how they're doing it. But that first thing that charter is overall what we're trying to drive as an organization. Okay, great, awesome. Now, another question that I have is once you define the ICP, you know, yes. early days, you are still discovering it, right? So you have a certain picture of ICP, let's say on day X of your journey, yep. but it's evolving, right? Because you're very early in the journey, it evolves. So which means that the understanding and the revision of this entire process needs to happen at regular cadence based on the feedback that you get yep. from the sales. Is, 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 is that the thought process, Jarvis? Absolutely. Is that right? Yeah. Yeah, that's absolutely. And I think that was the part when I was saying it's, it's so important to have that interlock with sales mm -hmm. early, you know, when it first starts, because what will happen is as the product matures, as the relationship matures, as we learn more about it, especially like the early stage companies, mm -hmm. you're going to learn more about the product. You're going to learn more about what the customers want. You're going to understand that need differently. So mm -hmm. I think it's very important early on to understand and, 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 and have that latitude and let everyone know that, hey, the ICP is a living, breathing thing. Mm -hmm. It's going to continue to evolve. That yeah. customer profile is not going to be like, hey, <laughs> what it is today, it won't be in, 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 in two years. It might not be the same in six months because we're in a constant changing landscape. Now, mm -hmm. some of those fundamental pieces will be the same, but it will continue to expand. Mm -hmm. If I look at like a company like Informatica or, you know, where it was in 2017 is not where it is in 2019. The product has evolved. Everything's evolved. We're in a world where AI and machine learning is starting to explode. So that's going to change how products are driven, how they're implemented, uh, how customers use them, which will ultimately change the UI, the user experience. So that's going to change the customer experience. And that's going to change that ideal customer profile from a person that's trying to just sit down and work to a person that's trying to absorb. And, and, and that's a different modality of service and delivery. This customer expectations are changing. Eh? Interesting times to be alive. Things keep changing very fast in our lifetimes. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> so Jaris, now we have point number one and point number two. Let's move to other priorities that you think. I, I know you wanted to speak, but you did stop for this conversation. Absolutely. No, so I think, you know, the next pieces we look at go into more of more of a world wrapped around how do we drive from just the IDP and, and, and developing that to what onboarding looks like. So like I said, mm -hmm. I think that third point is really mm -hmm. wrapped around the onboarding process. Mm -hmm. And that onboarding process is important because you want to make sure the customer starts off well. It's so important to drive first value. Onboarding first value equals retention. Successful onboarding, quick first value equals retention. So I think for zero to hero, zero to one, you have to onboard really well to ensure that you have first value and you'll start to retain customers very quickly. And what do I mean by uh, you know, onboarding and that first value approach. So the first thing you want to do is look at is as we onboard a customer, we're looking at, hey, what are we defining here in a success plan? You start a success plan right then and it's literally defining success for the customer. What's the customer's definition of success? So your first map, the first thing you map in onboarding is definition of success. Once you define success in onboarding, the next thing you want to do is start to then define the time for first value. But that's that, that third point is, okay, now we know what our ICP is. We have our charter. So let's take our charter, what we're trying to do as a company, compared to what our customer looks like, and then drive first value in onboarding. Here's where it gets really neat is because this is where partnership starts at onboarding. I think so many times companies make the mistake and let the customer lead. When mm. you're, they're a customer for a purpose, you, <laughs> they're a customer for a purpose. Uh, and I, t I totally get it. Uh, you know, it's, it's funny because you're a customer because you need our help and we need your business. So you need our help. So we're supposed to guide you in the process. So that's where that charter comes in. This is what success looks like. So we're going to ensure what success looks like, what we know our customer challenges is, and say, hey, this is the guide 
for you having success early. Now, but tell us what you want to do and we marry the two. So that's that onboarding journey, defining success, tying it to the charter and starting to build a plan. So that's three. Yeah, go ahead. Yes, charter, ICP, onboarding plan aligned with all of these three to ensure that you are completely focused on what your company can do, what the customer needs and what it needs to get to the first activation. And of course, the success beyond that. You also right. talk a lot, I think, Jarvis, about bringing the perspective of personas into this process, right? Yep. In onboarding and customer success. I think you've talked a lot about that. So where does that picture in the story? Yeah, absolutely. So if you think about it, the personas are important because as we, and, 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 you, and you, you drove it in beautifully, because the next thing after we talk about or think about um, how we're building out our customer journey, or as we think about, we got the charter, we have the ICP, we have onboarding. Well, in that onboarding stage, what you're going to do is you're going to solidify the mapping of the persona. So let me go back. When you have the ICP process and you talk about what that ideal customer profile is with sales. So now you have generic personas based on what the ICP says and what sales says. So now when you have that true CS to sales handoff, in that onboarding process, what you want to do is map those personas in mm -hmm. a more defined path. So, okay, we know what, you know, the sales team is saying. We know what the customer's issues are or challenges or desires are. We know what they're trying to do. And in onboarding, we map out the personas because what that's going to do is set up our engagement method. So by that means, we're going to say, okay, this persona has this level of engagement and also this level of deliverables. So going back to or starting to go into more of a strategic and structured approach, I said strategic and structured. So a success plan brings about strategy, but also uh, it gives you executable an executable approach. So when you start onboarding and you define what the definition of success is, and you know you think about like, uh, so many different tools like Zapscale and, and other products where you're defining a definition of success and then you're going into a success plan, that's really going to drive that onboarding mm -hmm. and first value. But also in there, you want to map your personas and say, uh, Jarvis wants this. He's an executive sponsor. He needs to see this result. And also you want to start to map out your expectations of a meeting cadence or when you're mm -hmm. going to connect with that particular person. Why is that important? because it's going to, you want to set that early, early on in the customer journey and say, hey, these are the expectations. This is what I need from you to be successful. This is what you're going to, you know, you need from me. So you want to be able to explain to them, I need to meet with your executives every quarter, or I need to meet your executive every six months, or I need to meet with the delivery team, you know, every two weeks. I need to meet with my SME once a week. And the importance of that is, you know, going in, the expectations, so we can clearly define the resource requirements, the expectations of, of need, so we can drive success and have a successful implementation, onboarding, and drive adoption. So it's very important. So when you map those personas out, you do that. And it's something I speak about whenever I talk to people. Uh, I think three of the key personas is driver, dreamer, doer. Uh, and driver, dreamer, doer are key personas. So if I think about what is a doer? A doer is, is kind of that person in on the front line. They're that feature function person that's doing the work. So you need to mm -hmm. identify who your doer is and identify objectives in your success plan or things that they're gonna do because they're the people in the, on the ground getting it done. Then I say you have a driver and that driver, it can be the doer and the driver can be the same depending on the company size. But that driver is kind of like the line manager, the person that's creating the project plan, the person that's kind of delivering those the project specific owner. pieces. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so they're going to drive those things uh, at a high level. So they're a part of that. And then after you get past the driver, you're going to get to the dreamer, which is usually like that executive sponsor, the budget owner. They don't necessarily are going to be the project owner. They're not going to be in the weeds in the day to day, but they're the ones that sign the, the quote, that sign the PO, the person that says, hey, I'm the reason is ultimately here. And if we have high benefit, 
they're going to be the person that first says, hey, I'm the reason Jarvis Group is here or whoever that is. So you want to set out those level of meetings and what are specific objectives for them because you want to make sure that you map out success objectives for the driver, dreamer, and doer. Why is that important? It's going to drive adoption. If everybody sees their levels of success and what they want being achieved early, often, and consistent, and they're informed, informed, informed about that, then you're able to see what you need to see and do what you need to do. So I think that's so, so important is to map out the driver, dreamer, doer, make sure that you have a success plan with success objectives that speak to what they need to achieve, how you're going to achieve it and derive those results. So those personas is going to drive adoption, it's going to drive your frequency of uh, interaction, and it's also going to drive your product growth. Here's the last part of that thing that's important about personas. Really important for all my startups out there, for all my scale-ups out there, I think it's so important to understand. When you map personas and you map the level of engagement and the meeting cadence, what it does is it gives you a way to be able to figure out scalability of your organization. What's the time constraints of your CSM? If they have these roles, they're gonna meet with the executive sponsor once a month or once a quarter. They're gonna meet with this person twice a week. So you start off knowing based on six customers with these specific roles and personas identified, the amount of time you're gonna expect. Mm -hmm. So you can start to forecast out the CSM's day in the life. And it's a way to build out day in the life from a more strategic systematic approach based on expectations of the persona as well as mapping out the journey. So you're able to deliver that. You can manage your burn rates, you can manage your CSM's time, and you can also manage value like that. Very, very interesting uh, concept, Jarvis, in terms of bringing it in such a simplistic way. Driver, dreamer, doer. You know, it's sort of resonates very, very nicely in terms of being able to understand and not only putting those personas on the table, also creating a plan for each of these personas of engagement, as well as the entire cadence of the activity, and then pulling on top of that, calculating the CSM requirements and time constraints along with that. I, I think these four, five things that we discussed, right? I think they really sort of wrap around the early days of a, a startup. I think if we are able to just sort these things, I mean, this is more than enough, you know, have a proper charter, right? Mm -hmm. Number two, figure out your ICP. Number three, start working on your onboarding. Number four, focus on personas within onboarding, sort of getting into the nitty gritties of entire engagement plan. And number five, putting together an entire CSM requirements. And that can start, as you said, with just six customers. You know, By the time you have right. five, six customers, you would have figured all of these things. And it sort of gives you a sort of a head start. You know, This is how you're ready to take off if you have sort mm -hmm. these things in your table. So you have solved the resources problem. You have solved the activation problem. You have also solved the focus and process setup in very early days. And you also solved the entire communication and engagement channels and process that happens with the customer. I think these are the few most important things in the early days, isn't it? People, yeah. process, and of course, customers. <laughs> product or comes along with that but customer is very important and customer is in the center of the entire story that if you have built together Jarvis I think this has been an extremely valuable and really compact episode with all this knowledge pulled into so quick of a discussion absolutely and I think like you said I mean you know it's it's, it's, it's building out that that small base framework and I think you know it's very important. I think so much, like I started off when I talked about that charter, it's, it's, it, that's, that's important work. I think a lot of people look at it as, oh, it's, it's just pie in the sky is good, cute words to do. But I think that's more of a mission, but a charter is who you are as a team, who your company is and what you're expecting to drive for your customer. And I think the biggest part of that is it helps you create a philosophy uh, of success and it helps you create a philosophy of how you hire, uh, mm -hmm. where you're driving. And it also even keeps a measure of when you start to build out those KPIs, you know, when you think about I'm building a success organization, what are my KPIs? 
So we didn't even touch on KPIs. We touched on the journey, but those KPIs really don't come until after you start with the customer. I think companies make the 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 the, the mistake of starting off and saying, "Hey, okay, what what is customer? We want a hundred percent retention, and we want you know customer upsells, and we want X, Y, and Z." And it's like, okay, well, get five customers, figure out the mode, figure out if your product's actually doing what they need, figure out if you need to make tweaks because ultimately you can set a target. And because you don't have enough data and enough customer knowledge and the customer base hasn't matured enough, you can't make an educated decision. You can take a book and say, hey, SaaS business say 95% of customers should retain. And that's true. That's any business. You want customers to retain to stay open. But Early on, you'll look at it and say, okay, what is our retention rate based on X, Y, and Z? And X, Y, and Z could be, they're only using one module. We have five. Okay, that means you need to go back and say, we're not selling five modules anymore. We're only selling one module going forward. And when you do that, then your retention rate's going to shift and your focus is going to shift. And you start doing one thing really well instead of five things fair. And, and I think those are the things that, you have to understand early. So creating that charter helps you to figure out the actual KPIs you want to have. And then KPIs start to come after the first six to nine to 12 months. And people will be fearful, like, how can I do that? You don't want to start off with KPIs and you don't understand your customer base. You just have a theory. Theory becomes actionable once you have data and proof yes. to show it. And that's Absolutely. where that first year, and I think zero to hero, comes in you're defining you're setting the standard and then you're going to start to tweak it because you might like first year we're retaining 70 percent of our customers that's not good okay let's figure out how do we keep the 70 what is the 70 like and you start to shift your product and you make those things work and that's how customer success becomes truly a pillar of your organization because it's defining the customer journey creating the customer experience and doing something great i'll leave you with this it's so important because early stage, you're creating the customer experience, not fixing it. And I think it's beautiful to be the zero to one because you're creating the experience and not fixing the experience. That's that's very, very interesting. And you know what? It so much resonates with all the uh, previous episodes and podcasts that we have done. You know, it's the same basis but reaching that to from different angles and the way you have sort of charted out the entire process of early days i think that's going to be extremely valuable thank you jarvis it was an honor to have you in the scale tale podcast i am sure the listeners would have learned a lot in fact i have learned a lot and have really enjoyed this conversation <laughs> Thank you for turning in on today's podcast. We appreciate all our listeners for joining us. If you want to connect with Jarvis on LinkedIn, the link will be in the description. Jarvis is also offering a CSM bootcamp for customer success managers and CS leaders. So if you are curious to know more, how to create that charter, how to set those things up, please visit the link given in the description. I'm sure you would be deep diving in the bootcamp on all of these topics, right Jarvis? Absolutely. We're going to go in deep. And when you come out of there, you're going to be ready to go out and execute and deliver beyond your wildest imagination. I think it's very important to, you know, attend these sessions and sort of be part of these boot camps because there's not enough already out there available. And in terms of insights for people who have actually done it and have come out with such key directions of playbooks on what an early stage founder needs to do. So thank you very much, Jarvis, for joining us. And listeners, if you've enjoyed this, please follow and subscribe to our Scale Tale podcast. We are available on all popular podcast platforms. Stay tuned. And for the next upcoming mega episode, we will let you know soon. Thanks, Jarvis. Have a good day. Thank you. All right, you too. Bye-bye.